so this question six is the one about half-life. Um, it's uh, specifically about carbon-14, um, which is used for radioactive dating in anthropology and in other contexts. Um, and you know, in the hint, it always kind of tells you to go to the section, and you should if you haven't read the um, section. <laughs> and uh, the section describes what half-life is. Um, it's uh, this graph that describes um, the what half-life is. So, uh, so when you have half-life of a, a radioactive element, we in that amount of time, what it means is whatever amount of material you had in that amount of time, that goes down to a half. And uh, here's the interesting thing. In the next amount of half-life, it's not reducing by 500 uh, times 10 to the 3 uh, nuclei. It's actually going half from that. And then it's a half from that. And then it's a half from that. This gives a picture that looks uh, something like a red um, exponential, what we call exponential decay. Um, and it, it'll take a very long time for this number to actually go to zero. Well, I mean, you know, in terms of real numbers, it'll never go to zero, but at some point you either have one nuclide or zero. So, um, so to go actually go to zero, it takes a long time, but at any given point in time, if you wait a half-life amount of time, the number of remaining nuclides gets reduced by half. So that's the important for, thing for you to understand about half-life. And um, so there are more mathematical ways you can handle this. But um, you know, this class, I, I don't know if you are even supposed to know about exponentials. I think I, for me, exponentials got introduced in a calculus class. So you might not know about exponential other than one phrase that I don't like very much, exponentially increasing. <laughs> Sorry, so many people misuse it. I don't like it. Um, <laughs> so, so, but you can do this question in a very um, intuitive step-by-step -step way. So let me demonstrate that. So, um, so you know, it says review, uh, and you know, it gives you the hint of uh, what I'm actually going to demonstrate right now. First, to determine how many half lives have passed, and use that information to figure out what fraction of original carbon fourteen atoms should remain. That's the hint, and that's actually what I'm going gonna go through right now. So, um, so let let uh, without further ado, let's uh, get started. So it says, in a sample of carbon containing one part per trillion of carbon-14, um, so one part, that's a how much uh, carbon-14 I start out with. By the way, the numbers are randomized. You might not get a number that's not one, that's maybe, I don't know, 0 0.7, 2, 3, whatever. Um, it asks how much carbon-14 remains after 17, 1, 9 years. That's a very specific number, but as you're going through this number, you will eventually see that this number of years you are being given, it's going to be an integer unit of half-life. So let me just do this. 17, 190 years. Okay, that's how many years they are. Um, I'm going to divide that into each half-life, 5,730 years. Um, so divide by 5,730. I get three. So what that means is um, this particular mathematical relationship is true that 17,190 is equal to 5,730 times three. So what that means is this number of years that's given here is three half-lives. That's really the information I want. That that's half life is the relevant unit of uh, measure of duration of time in the context of radioactive decay. So here, um, I so you know three half lives. <laughs> so so let me go through this reasoning process. So I'm gonna look at what happens over three half lives. So um, so let me start out with different color. So let me start out with one part per trillion of carbon-14. After one half-life, the question is, how many 
how many parts per trillion of carbon-14 does it remain? Well, in half, one half-life, half of carbon-14 is going to go away. So, okay, in one half-life, this will become 0 0.5 parts per trillion. All right, that's one half-life. So, okay, what happens after another half-life, second half-life? Then only half of that is going to remain. So it's going to be 0 0.25 parts per trillion that remains. Use a calculator if you have to. And finally, after three half-lives, after the third and the last half-life, what remains is half of that. So use a calculator, 0 0.125 half, uh, parts per trillion. So that's really all that is. Um, um, and I give you the integer number of half-life years so that you can go through this reasoning process. If I gave you something that's not exactly three, four, five half-life, if it's 3.5 half-life, then you have to use more mathematical functions and that's not what this class is for. So, okay, so after that many years, you have 0 0.125 parts per trillion of carbon-14 remaining in the sample, okay. B, carbon-14 is used for a technique called the carbon dating. Oh yeah, I talked about that a little bit. So it says um, artifact originally had seven times 10 to the nine carbon-14 atoms. Never mind how they knew that originally. Let's just say that's, um, that's a kind of a subject of the discipline of people who do carbon dating and they, they have their methods. And, um, and what they are measuring is that the sample has 1.75 times 10 to the 9 carbon-14 atoms. Um, so, yeah, 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 okay. So you can read the hint. What I'm going through now is exactly what I say in the hint there. So the first thing I'm going to do is, okay, um, how, uh, how, how much did the number of carbon atoms, did they go down? Um, I feel like the best way to figure that out is to take this original number seven times 10 to the nine and divide it by uh, 1.75 times 10 to the nine. And 10 to the nines are gonna cancel, so let me just do seven divided by 1.75, 1.75, so four. Okay, so what you are getting with this number is that, um, Originally, there were four times as much carbon carbon fourteen as much carbon fourteen. Hmm. So, how much time would it have to pass for the number of carbon fourteen to go down by a factor of four? Well, in one half life, the the amount of carbon-14 will go down by one factor of two. And in the second half-life, it will go down by another factor of two. So it takes two half-lives for the amount of carbon-14 to go down by a total factor of four. So, okay, so the number of years here should be two half-lives. So using the information, 5,730 years is half-life, let me, just to the calculation, 5730 times two for two half lives, 11460. So 11460 years old. Submit, and the answers are right. Good.